What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made these beautiful, delicious, smoky, tender, amazing barbecue birria tacos with a beautiful consomme, of course. Coming up! This is some meat! Ooh! Pat it dry. And what I got here is some osobuco, a nice big beautiful beef neck roast, and of course this big old French beef shank. This is a thing of beauty. So meaty, so thick, nice fat cap, tons of intramuscular fat, and some bone marrow. And I've also got some marrow bones over here that we're gonna use a little later on. And the reason I chose these cuts is because they are full of collagen and connective tissue, which means they are inherently very tough. But just like all tough cuts in barbecue, when cooked properly low and slow, that collagen will turn into gelatin and we'll have some super succulent meat, kind of like a beef cheek or a brisket or a beef rib. These will come out super tender, very flavorful, very meaty. And the fact that they're all bone in is just gonna really help with our stock. And we should end up with an incredibly flavorful consomme and birria taco at the end of the day. And all these off cuts, these tougher cuts, these lesser known, more unpopular, cuts are some of my favorite things to cook because they're oftentimes a lot cheaper but also once they break down and are cooked properly there really is nothing better than the shreddability and the texture of these kind of cuts and if you can't find these cuts at your local supermarket consider going to the sponsor of this video Porter Road. Porter Road is a butcher shop based in Nashville Tennessee that has a major online presence where they ship high-end beef chicken and pork and charcuterie right to your door and the quality really speaks for itself one of the major benefits is they work with trusted farmers who raise animals the right way with no antibiotics that are treated humanely on pasture and they're there's expertise and care put into the entire process from raising the animal until the steak hits your plate. And Porter Road does an incredible job with their butchery because everything is hand cut and you can tell they really know what they're doing because every piece I've got has just been absolutely perfectly squared off, no scraggly bits. And I'm not sure if you noticed, but when I opened these up, some of these bone-in cuts had extra thick plastic wrapped around the bones to make sure that it didn't puncture the cryovac, which a lot of people don't do. Very nice touch. And while they carry all the main cuts you know and love, like ribeyes, strips, filet mignons, they also have all the off cuts like the osobuco and beef cheeks and pig wings and this beef neck roast. I've never seen that anywhere else. And the best part is you can shop a la carte, meaning going through the entire website, picking and choosing individual cuts you want, or you can sign up for different subscription services where they'll ship boxes right to your door. And if you want to know my favorite cuts, they also have a curated page with everything that I like to cook that I highly recommend checking out. So if you're looking to get some high quality meat shipped right to your door, head to porterroad.com to get 15% off your order. Again, I'll have a link in the description box of this video that you can click to take you to porterroad.com where you can get 15% off your first order. Highly recommend it. Thank you, Porter Road. Now, typically these cuts are just brown and thrown right into the stew, but uh, this is a barbecue channel, so we're gonna smoke these off to add a little smoky element to the equation. But before we do that, we're gonna hit them with a little bit of Chud Rub. On sale now at shopchuds.com. Great stocking stuffer, just to get a little extra layer of flavor. Help that bark build a little bit. You know the drill, folks. And we're gonna be seasoning the consomme pretty heavily at the end anyway, so this will help us just get a little bit of a jump start. Just a nice even coating, folks. You know the drill, nothing too precision over here, but uh, you know, just don't forget the sides. Rookie move. Anywho, let's fire up the pit. I wish Porter Road would help me butcher that pesky little snake in my boot. And on the pit we go. Now all these cuts are going to finish cooking down in the consomme at the end of the day. So we're really just trying to get some smoke on there, get some nice color, build up a bit of a bark. And you know, the further we cook them now, the less time it'll take them to soften up in the broth. So I'm gonna rock this pit around 275, 300 degrees for the next few hours. It's been several hours and our meat is looking nice and barky. Beef neck looking roasty. Ow. Rocking right around 175, so. They're almost done. And in the meantime, let's go ahead and get our consomme started. So into this large pot, I'm going in with a whole bunch of dry chilies. We got some ancho chilies, some New Mexico chilies, some chili de arbol. Going in, and we're gonna let those toast off in the dry heat just to kind of wake up their flavors. And after a few short minutes, these are nice and lightly toasted. Nothing is burned, so out they come. Next up into the pot, we're going in with a nice healthy squeezer of some oil, as well as one large white onion, roughly chopped. And once those are cooked down for a couple of minutes, softened up nicely. We're going in with a whole bunch of freshly chopped up garlic. And we don't want that to burn, so we're just gonna cook that for a couple of minutes here before going in with a bunch of Roma tomatoes. After that's cooked down for about five to 10 minutes, into the blender it goes. And just get that nice and blended up. Beautiful. And now back into the pot, we're gonna go in with some Porter Road beef stock. Oh, 
Oh, how you doing? <laughs> this stuff is awesome. Nice and gelatinous and thick. You can tell it's made with real bones. And in with our chilies. And we're just gonna let those steam. I really didn't know if that was gonna fit or not. That was awesome. Just gonna let those steam until softened. And once those have softened up into the blender, they go as well. Boop. And then back into the pot we go. Lovely stuff. And then in we go with the rest of our beef stock. Ooh, right in the eye. And I gotta say, I was fully planning on making my own beef stock for this, but I'm very glad that Porter Road makes some because uh, making stock takes a long time. And this is already a pretty laborious video. Well, this comes back up to a simmer. We're gonna go in with the rest of our ingredients, including some black peppercorns, a couple of bay leaves, some coriander, two cloves, two cinnamon sticks, some oregano, and some cumin. Also gonna top this off with some water. And once up to a simmer, it's finally time to add in our meat. Starting out with our beautiful neck roast. It looks just like a beef rib. We're gonna have to play with this again sometime. But for now, in. We also got our big old volcano shank here. That's very hot. Also going in. And I also got all these marrow bones that I threw on about 45 minutes ago just to toast off. And these are full of that bone marrow, which is pretty much fat, which is gonna give us that really nice fat we need for soaking the tortillas at the end of this cook. But also these bones are gonna help amplify this stock, fortify it even more, and make sure everything is tasting fantastic and smoky. And of course, we can't forget our osabuco. Oh God. And we can't forget our osabuco. I pulled those off a couple hours in because they cooked a lot faster than the other two. And now all we need to do is let this simmer away until that meat is impossibly tender that stock is really rich and flavorful and smoky, and everything is just smelling delicious. After about two and a half hours of simmering, let's check in on our meat. Looking good, nice and bubbly, reduced down a bit, and uh, apparently all the meat has come off of our shank bone here, which is a good sign. But if we pick up a piece of meat, oh yeah, nice and tender, nice and shreddy. Oh yeah, this stuff is done. So first thing I'm gonna do is take out all these bones trying to leave any marrow that may be in there still in the pot because that's just good flavor. Beautiful. Also, if you come across a cinnamon stick or a bay leaf or something like that, might as well pull that out too. Beautiful. Get rid of these. And it's time to start fishing out all of our meat. Ooh, yeah. Nice and shreddy, nice and tender. There's another cinnamon stick. It's maybe one of the benefits of barbecuing your cuts. Usually people just throw the meat in raw or with a sear on it. And then after a few hours of simmering, they pull it out and chop it all up or shred it with some forks or something. But uh, after a nice breakdown in the smoker, this stuff is good to go. Beautiful stuff, smells amazing. Amazing, but I'm just going through breaking up any of these other big chunks looking for bay leaves or anything weird any bone fragments or things that we don't want to eat looks a lot like barbacoa beautiful next up I'm going to send all this consomme through this strainer here to start cleaning it up a little bit and as you can see, we got out the remaining bay leaves. I can see a clove in there and a bunch of extra skins from the tomatoes and the chilies and all that stuff that we don't need. And now into the fridge, this goes along with the meat and we'll pick this up tomorrow. It is the next day. Ooh. And as you can see, our stock has solidified real nice, but more importantly, all that fat has congealed onto the top in a single layer that we're now gonna scoop off, which is gonna make it easier for tortilla dipping down the road and also give us a really nice, defatted, clean consomme. Turns out a strainer works really well for this as well. And there we go, all our fat in this little pan and our nice, clean consomme. I spent the last hour or so reducing this down a little bit. And as you can see, it is looking absolutely beautiful, nice and thick, nice and clean too, no fat or foam on top. But now that it's fully reduced, we can give it a taste for final seasoning and adjustment. That tastes so good. But it does still need a big fat pinch of salt. So we're gonna go in there, but the cinnamon and the clove are coming through nicely. The chili flavor is strong, but not too spicy. It just tastes great. Perfect for a cold winter's day. All right, folks, moment of truth. I got my hot fat back here. I got the chud press fired up nice and hot. I've got some of my meat that has been warmed through and I tested it for seasoning and it is absolutely fantastic. Got my shredded Oaxaca cheese. First things first, a nice dunk. Just look at that color. Oh, beautiful. Next up, we'll go on with some of our beautiful shredded meat and then a lovely amount of our fresh Oaxaca cheese. I know I probably should have pulled this instead of shredded this, but you know, this was way quicker. A little bit of consomme on there just for good measure. Fold these over, it'll give them a little press. 
The smells, guys. I'm serious. This is outrageous. Flip these guys over, toast the underside. Just gonna let those toast away while we keep going. Really glad I got a grease tray on this thing because this fat is vibrant. I don't think you can have too much cheese on one of these. I'm starting to get some lovely color on there. That is just a sight of beauty. I gotta say, this is a pretty fun thing to cook. And you can really blast these things with heat. Cheese just keeps them all glued together. I don't know why I waited so long to do this. Now, I would love to do this with goat. That's the traditional way to make birria, but uh, I don't even think I've ever seen goat in a grocery store for sale, which is a shame because I love goat. Very tasty. And just like that, all of our beautiful birria tacos are done. What a spread. Top these with a little sprinkle of some white onions and some cilantro just for some color. A couple of lime wedges. And of course, we can't forget our consomme. Ooh, yes please. Throw a little extra meat in there for a little how you doing. Right, onions and a big fat pinch of cilantro. I mean, would you just look at this spread, folks? So many beautiful, smoky tacos, tender meat, beautiful consomme. Oh, I'm ready to dive on in. I gotta say, folks, I'm pretty excited about this one. I've been putting this video off for a long time just because it seemed like one of those internet popular things to do. But uh, now that I'm staring at a big old plate of these things, I'm ready. Cause like, oh, what's not to like about that? Dip, 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 you gotta love. Something that comes with a dip, am I right? Oh my God. Mm. Holy hell, that's amazing. Mm. The flavors are just so complex. Mmm, that cheese, perfect. I mean, what's not to like about that, folks? The meat is tender, it's nice and smoky, perfectly seasoned. It's got the very slightest amount of spice to it. I was a little concerned, because I put a lot of chili darabo in there. A little onion and cilantro really balance it out. Mmm, that is so good. That tortilla is soft, yet crunchy, because it's fried in fat, but it's still pliable. Mmm. That's so good. Again, those warming spices, the cinnamon and the clove just coming through. It almost tastes kind of Christmassy. Does need a little squirt of lime though, I'll tell you what. Mm. Ah. Mm. Mm -hmm. They are a bit messy though, not gonna lie about that. It's interesting, it's a very similar process to how you'd make something like Texas chili or barbacoa, but this is totally its own food group. It's very good. Mm -hmm. So meaty, so flavorful. The cheese, it's unbelievable folks. I'm being stared at. <gasps> Video? I was gonna say, someone has to pronounce it right in this video. <laughs> it's me, the whitest woman alive. Oh my God, this lime is so greasy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everything on this whole patio is very greasy right now. Gotta have the dip dip. Mm, good Lord. I'm speechless. <laughs> They're delicious. Mm. Perfect wintry dinner. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I know this is typically consumed as like a hangover meal, but it really does seem Christmassy to me. It's got those fall flavors. Mm -hmm. You made so many of them. Yeah, that was a lot of work. I figured I might as well. Mm -hmm. Good God. Going in for number two. Not gonna lie, I could sit here eating these all night long, and I probably will. Ow. Mm. So good. And now that I've eaten all the onions off of this piece, I think it's time for the official taste test. That was weak. Now we gotta do it again. Ooh, that'll have to do. I mean, all right, John, that is it. That is how to make some absolutely fantastic birria tacos. I highly recommend making this one. This is definitely a contender for best bite of the year here on Chud's Barbecue. Really fun to make too. And I fully plan on putting the rest of that consomme into ice cube trays and freezing it along with that meat. So whenever I want a late night birria taco, it'll be real quick to whip them up. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.